Well, Mrs. Henderson, what do you think this diagram is that I'm drawing here? It looks to me like a cell. You are exactly right. This is a cell like we've been talking about in class. Now, there's a very important part of this cell that I made nice and big here. What do you think this is? This is the nucleus. She's right. That is the nucleus of the cell where the genetic material is kept. Aren't these things called chromosomes, Professor Smartycorn? You are exactly right. These chromosomes. <laughs> these funny little rod-shaped things are chromosomes. Now let's see, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. This cell has 22 chromosomes. Now, do you think this could be a human cell if it has 22 chromosomes? No, in there? human cells have 46 chromosomes in their body cells. Do you know of anything that has 22, Professor Smartycorn? I do. If you look in your unit pack, there's a page in your unit pack that has a chart listing the number of chromosomes in lots of different organisms. And let's look in that chart. 22 chromosomes. Toads have 22 chromosomes. So this must be a model of a cell from a toad with 22 chromosomes in its body cell. Now if a toad had 22 chromosomes in its body cell, how many would it have in its sex cells? Sex cells have half the number, so there would be 11 chromosomes. Very good, Mrs. Anderson. All right. Now, these chromosomes are pretty small. In this model, I want to show you one of these chromosomes a little bigger so we can kind of see some of the important details of this chromosome. So I've got a bigger model of that little chromosome right here. Now, Mrs. Henderson, chromosomes are made of something very special, and we're going to unwind this chromosome to see what it's made of. Can you unwind this? You might is have it to... yarn? Well, my model is made of yarn, but chromosomes really are made of a very long molecule. Why don't you go over there so we can unwind. Do you know what that long molecule is called, Mrs. Henderson? DNA. She's right. DNA is that long, long molecule. So this was a chromosome, and we unwound it to show the DNA. Coiled up DNA makes a chromosome. You unwind a chromosome, and you get a long, long, long molecule of DNA. Last year, I learned that when the cell is just hanging out, the DNA does not coil up, but when it gets ready to divide, the DNA coils up into this rod-shaped structure known as a chromosome. That's right. So this cell must be ready to divide because you can see the chromosomes in the nucleus. This cell is ready to divide. The DNA has coiled itself up into chromosomes. All right, now we've got to continue with our model. This is a chromosome. We unwind it, and we get a long, long, long molecule of DNA. Now, this yarn is lots of different colors, and there's a reason that I chose yarn that's lots of different colors. Is DNA different colors? Real DNA is actually clear. You can't really see colors in real DNA. Then why didn't you just use some fish line or something to show us well, this? Well, I wanted to show that certain pieces or segments of DNA have a very special name. If we look at this segment of DNA, where it's red, purple, blue, green, blue, that segment of DNA is what we call a gene. Blue jeans, like I'm wearing? No, this is gene spelled G-E-N-E. -E. Your genes that you get from your parents. Your genes ah. that you inherit from your parents. A gene is just a piece or a segment of DNA. So this gene right here might determine my eye color, for example. That's right, this red, purple, blue, green, blue, that might be the gene for blue eyes. Well, what if I had a chromosome and the sequence for where eye color should be is red, yellow? Red, yellow? Okay. If red, purple, blue, green, blue meant blue eyes, red followed by yellow might be brown eyes. This would be the gene for blue eyes. That's the gene for brown eyes. So if you were born with those genes, you'd have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. If the gene was this sequence, you would have brown eyes. Brown eyes. That's right. Cool. Okay. So that's just another chromosome with what? a different sequence of DNA. These chromosomes look a lot different. Well, chromosomes don't all look exactly the same. You can see in this toad, some chromosomes are big, some chromosomes are shorter, 
Some are a little bit lumpy looking, some are skinny, but chromosomes are all made of coiled up DNA. These are both chromosomes, even though they look a little bit different, because they're both made of a long strand of coiled up DNA. I get it. All right. Hey, let's go over to our diagram that the students are going to draw of the model. Okay. So, in this diagram, here's the chromosome, and then, as it's uncoiled, this part here, it represents the DNA. So, and if we look at just one short segment of the DNA, we call that a, a gene. gene. And the genes determine your traits, like eye color and hairy knuckles. Or hair color. Or, or how tall you are. Or your chances of getting certain diseases, maybe like cancer, that can be determined by your genes. Whether you can roll your tongue, like that, that's determined by your genes. Can you roll your tongue, Mrs. Hamish? Yes. Excellent. Mrs. Madison can't, however. I can, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else we need to tell them? I don't think so. That covers our yarn model of DNA.